welcome back to the O Hockey Show. Now, I would usually go into my normal spiel about going into the New Jersey Devils real quick, but I have something I want to tell you. I am slowly chugging right along to getting to the big one double zero number 100 subscribers, and I can't wait to get there. I'm almost there. I'm at 72 at the time of this recording. I'm so close. I've been getting a few subscribers like every day. And it's really exciting, and it'd be, I hate when YouTubers shout out and say, like, you should like, comment, and subscribe at the beginning of the video. I hate it. I'm not going to do that. But I would just like to ask you, on the way to 100, please subscribe. It would make my day. It would make my world. It would make my month. Make my year. Whatever you want to say. If I get to 100, it'll say, like, hey, I'm really doing something for fun. So just do it. I'm just a kid trying to have some fun. So just do it. Why not? Just do it. Come on, just do it. Anyways, moving on, let's go to the New Jersey Devils. But if you do it, you're a beautiful person. If you don't, not so much, but you already know that. So New Jersey Devils. So this is a team that has all the potential in the world to have some superstar guys. But the question is, out of all of them, who will be their best player next year? Let's start off and tackle Jesper Brat, the guy that needed a contract signing, a guy that's Swedish, which I didn't guess from his name. Uh, 26 goals, 47 assists, 73 points, leads the Devils last year. And I don't know if this kid was like, I'm okay. This is my contract year. I want to get paid. So he went on the ice every night and killed it because he wanted to get that money, which I feel like he definitely got ripped off. But this was his best year by a freaking mile, by a landslide. 73 points usually in his, like, four- or five-year career. He gets to, like, he's in the 30s. And this year, 73. Insane. This kid was like, I'm, screw it, I'm going. So... I feel like this guy was underrated a lot. Now, I don't know if underrated is the right word, or maybe it's just lucky, but this guy didn't get talked about at all. And 73 points is not bad at all. Um, I feel like if Nazem Kadri got to 73 points, it'd be a huge deal. But Jesper Brat's not a very big story. Nobody cares if Jesper Brat gets to 100, I mean, gets to 73 points. So I feel like, and his contract kind of says that too, because his new deal. For me personally, if Jack Hughes, if this was his contract year and got 73 points, you know he'd be getting a huge deal. He'd be get eight, nine million. But Jesper Brat, because he's not a big deal, he gets what he got, which I think was like 5.4 million or something like that. It was something like it was probably like the right, like I would say it's probably the right value. But you know that it's like kind of a double standard because like nobody cares about Jesper Brat. But if it was Hughes, if it was if he was like a name that people care about, it'd be a huge deal. So that's all I got to say. Jesper brought 73 points, led the team in points. But do we have a Troy Terry situation where points don't always matter? Well, let's see here. Jack Hughes. Now, the thing about Jack Hughes to uh, Jesper Bratt is that, sure, Bratt had 73 points. But Jack Hughes beats him when it comes to points per game. He only played 49 games this year. I think he had a 1.17 uh, uh, points per game percentage and uh that's pretty good in my eyes that's pretty good so he had 56 ga points in 49 games you got to think if you take out the next 33 games you got to imagine he's gonna get at least to the eight to get to get to the 80s you got to assume i mean if not the 80s at least definitely the 70s so 56 points this guy let he was going to lead the team in points if he wasn't injured uh, which is unfortunate but I'm looking forward to seeing Jack Hughes with his with what's going forward for him after having his best year. That's the thing too. 49 games. He played less games than in uh, early years, and he had more points. This is his best year in points, and he played the last amount of games. That's a pretty interesting uh, story going forward. But thinking about how Jack Hughes has progressed this year. And think about how he's going to play next season, as well as how good the young guys that play next year that I'm going to talk about down here. If the like just the combination of factors, I I'm totally see the Devils, com like being a, an all a powerhouse. I'm not going to be surprised at all. I think this is the going to be the year where they really take that step forward, and maybe they even get a playoff spot. But that that's a that's a whole uh, other conversation. But Jack Hughes, 56 points this year, playing only 49 games, 
and thinking about how these younger guys are going to progress and develop as well, along with the addition of Andre Palat, I can only imagine, I can. I think Jack Hughes will get into the 80s for sure this year, as long as he plays the whole year, or at least most of it, and he has, uh, that, that's it, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the 80s, and maybe he even could reach 90 if they're doing really good, but I say the 80s at least. But moving on to the captain of the team, the captain with the second amount of points, 60 points, 21 goals, 39 assists, so less goals than Bratt and Jack Hughes, but he has the assists beating Jack Hughes, not Jesper Bratt. So anyways, uh, Nico Heischer, now the guy that kind of was the first drafted guy in the Devils rebuild, or if you want to call it rebuild, the first time when they got the first overall pick, they pick up Heischer over Nolan Patrick, which, hey, you know that was the right choice, obviously, I didn't need to tell you that, I know you're smarter than that, you know, you knew that already, anyways, um, Nico, Nico Heischer is a great, I, he's not really a flashy player, you know, he's not really... He's not like Jack Hughes where he's going to do some he can't he's not going to do some crazy move. I'm sure he could, but he's not like he's just kind of get the job done. Let's go in, let's score goals. That's kind of how I feel like his style is. Is let's just go in there, get the job done, let's score, let's win. And that rightfully so. I mean, he's the captain. That's kind of he's kind of the right captain out of this bunch of guys to be the captain and lead this team. But he sure like if you presented these guys on the board to me, which I know I haven't gone through everyone yet, but if you presented all of them, I just feel like he sure is not going to be someone's pick, but that's just because he's not flashy. He's not flashy and he doesn't get the most amount of points, so there's a combination of two things. So let's move on to the guys that I kind of honorable mentions, I guess. Dawson Mercer. Him and, uh, him and Yegor Sheng... Sheng, uh, Sheng Sharingovich, Sharingovich, I know his name, it's just, I just tried to read it, I know his name, Yegor Sharingovich, those two guys, first season, 42 points and 46 points, well, first, like, real deal seasons, and uh, I love him, I love both of those guys, I really, really, really think that those guys are going to take the next step and progress this year as well, and uh, just those guys stepping up, and playing how they're going to play, along with the addition of Andre Pilat. They have got two solid lines, at least. Two solid lines, as well as the maybe potential addition of Alexander Holtz, if he can make the jump. He only had two assists last season in nine games when he was given a, his ball to try to run with. So not anything amazing, not what I want to see, but we know Holtz is a superstar sniper. He had, I think, 26 or was it 36 goals in the AHL. Pretty good, pretty, pretty good to me, in a AHL player to get that, because I, I the Roadrunners guys that I saw didn't even do that, so that, I, pretty good, so if Holtz can make that jump and be a solid addition, could you imagine that top line of, like, Hughes, Holtz, and you know what, let's throw in, I mean, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who it is, just those additions all the way through the lineup, this team's forwards are going to be amazing, defensively I would like to see a little bit more it's kind of it's kind of a really boring defense in my eyes I feel like they're kind of the defenses I don't like kind of like the Senators just kind of, I, I call it sit on your hands defense it's just kind of boring and bland like I, I just don't care but it does get the job done so th there it is and then goaltending they add Vitek Vanacek and they also already had Mackenzie Blackwood who I love so I think this team overall, as long as these guys, these forwards, take that next step, I would not be surprised if this team could really make a run for it. Because I think they do. I think they have all the potential in the world. But out of these guys, who do I get toward the green star of greatness from the Verde Marquero de Marker? So who would I name the best player on this team? Out of the all of New Jersey Devils, who would I say is the most important? Well, I feel like he sure is just kind of like he's not the best of both worlds. It's like, okay, do you want points? Well, he doesn't have the most points. Do you want the most skill? He doesn't have the most skill. So he sure you can kind of wipe out. Dawson Mercer and Sharon Govich. Sure, those two guys, they ha probably have the most potential to make the biggest leap next year. But do you think it'll be a big enough leap to top other guys that have already proven themselves? I don't know. Could Alexander Holtz come up and be like a 40-50 goal scorer? Probably not, but what if he's paired along with Hughes and Hughes takes that huge step along with Bratt? 
all these guys make that jump, it's possible. But really, I think the only person that has proven that they are a solid player that is going to be good and continue to be good has has to be Jack Hughes. Now, it would be Jesper Bratt. But the thing is, is that Bratt has not proven to me that he's going to consistently stay solid. While we know Jack Hughes is, is getting better as he goes along. And this year was already his best year, and he played least amount of games he's played in a long time. So to me, if consist between consistency, knowing he has the skill to be really good, and growing potential, this guy's consistently been getting better. He has all the skill, and we know he can get better. And Jesper brought in one season. I don't like to put like, chips on guys that play have one good season. So I just don't see it. And as well, even if Jesper Bratt can stay the same way, if you keep him the same way, and you have Hughes play out the rest of the season, he still probably would have ended up with more points. So that's all I have to say about the New Jersey Devils. Tell me down below in the comments how you think I'm completely idiotic for choosing that. And it's obviously Nico Heischer, because of course it is. You idiot. So tell me how stupid I am down below. And... After you do that, make sure you pick up your subscription to get me to 100 subscribers by hitting that red subscribe button. If you liked it, leave a like button. Not, don't leave a dislike, but go down below and tell me how stupid I am. Tell me how much you dislike me in the comments, but don't hit the dislike button. So do all that down below, and until next time, I've been your dapperly dressed host, Owen. This is a cat. Have an amazing day. Too sweet, and ta-ta for now.